You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. There are a lot of mercenaries in the Commonwealth. You've got the occasional raiders and the gunners, but I don't think any of them stand out quite as much as Kellogg. Unfortunately, we don't get very many situations where we get to interact with Kellogg in depth, because we kill him about midway through the game. But sometimes, you've got to wonder what could have been. What if the sole survivor did this or did that, or more specifically, what if the sole survivor didn't kill Kellogg at Fort Hagen? Instead, he or she spares Kellogg and leaves him to his own devices. Today, I want to discuss Kellogg. While I think we can all agree that Kellogg is a bad guy, he's also a broken man, and he's done a lot of terrible things, but could he possibly redeem himself? Or would he just slide back into his old ways? So let's answer the question. What would happen if you could spare Kellogg in Fallout 4? So here's some backstory on Kellogg to bring everybody up to speed. Kellogg was born in 2179 in the New California Republic on the West Coast. Growing up, Kellogg had a poor relationship with his father, but had a much better relationship with his mother. Kellogg's mom did seem to genuinely care for Kellogg and ultimately instilled in him the idea that he could only rely on himself. It seems Kellogg took this advice to heart because despite having a caring mother, Kellogg would eventually run away from home, leaving his mother at the mercy of his father. Over time, Kellogg would become known as a hired gun on the West Coast, where he eventually landed a protection job with the She, and he met and married a woman named Sarah, and the two of them had a daughter named Mary. Sadly, his family was murdered by an unknown organization, and he eventually finds his family's killers and kills them. The entire experience left Kellogg much colder than he was before, and ultimately started his migration towards the East Coast. He didn't really care about where he wanted to go so much, as long as he could get away from San Francisco and a lot of bad memories. During this migration, Kellogg developed into a very effective and brutal mercenary. He would do almost anything as long as he could get paid. He'd kill anyone you wanted him to whether it be raiders, other mercenaries, and even the innocent. Again, it didn't matter to him as long as he got paid. However, once he arrived in the Commonwealth, he was approached by the Institute, who didn't seem to appreciate him interfering with their interests. This was a situation that could have gone really bad for Kellogg. However, it ultimately resulted in him becoming their top surface operative. If the Institute needed something done from now on, Kellogg would be the one to do it. As we all know, Kellogg opened Vault 111 with the help of the Institute and found that most of the cryogenically frozen residents were still intact. He took Sean from the sole survivor's spouse and murdered the sole survivor's spouse. Kellogg, along with the other Institute scientists, left the rest of the vault's inhabitants to die, leaving the sole survivor in the cryopod only to emerge 60 years later. Of course, as you play through Fallout 4's story, you eventually encounter Kellogg once again at Fort Hagen, where you kill him. Even though Kellogg worked for the Institute, it appears that many Institute scientists have never particularly liked him. Because of that, Kellogg's relationship with the Institute wasn't particularly positive. I would imagine that father must be at least somewhat upset with Kellogg for killing one of his biological parents. Otherwise, why would father release his other biological parent from the vault in an attempt to try and kill Kellogg? Institute scientists are also jealous of Kellogg as well. According to one of Father's terminal entries, Father pinpoints that the Institute scientists envy Kellogg's enhanced life expectancy. This entry goes on to say, quote, Kellogg is a living memorial to a forgotten program. He is an augmented human being, a cyborg really, and the benefits he has received cannot be denied. But really, the scientists here could not care less about enhanced reflexes or greater combat efficiency. No, the cause of their envy is something more practical, more primal. His enhanced life expectancy. Through some cut dialogue during one of the memory sequences, Kellogg does have some distrust of the Institute when it comes to his cybernetic implants. He seems to think that the Institute wanted some kind of leverage over him by giving him more cybernetic implants after the incident at Vault 111. In Kellogg's cut memory, Kellogg says the following, 
Turned out I was the only one to ever get these installed. At least that's the story that I heard. Some kind of complications is all they would say. I suppose they didn't much care if something scrambled my brains. And anyway, by that point, I wouldn't have let them take the implants out. I'd come to rely on them too much, which, looking back, is probably one of the reasons they agreed to it in the first place. Gives them some leverage over me. In the same cut memory, Kellogg says the cybernetics were a reward for acquiring Sean from Vault 111. He says this, This was my reward for the Vault job. I'd started getting implants a few years back, but only minor stuff. This was the full deal, the cutting-edge tech that they didn't usually let out of the lab. I volunteered for everything. I figured I didn't have anything to lose. Besides, this was kind of their thing, like killing people was my thing. Why not see what they could do for me? Kellogg even espouses some hatred for the Institute and seems to secretly wish that the sole survivor would kill him. During one of Kellogg's memories, particularly the one with the cryopods, he says the following. Vault. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving him alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft, pre-war vault dweller, even if he somehow got thawed out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If he could take me out, they won't be able to hide from him for long. Upon meeting the sole survivor at Fort Hagen, if you choose certain dialogue options, Kellogg will even express some remorse for killing your spouse and taking your son. This is strange because he typically acts like he doesn't care about the consequences of the things he does. Here's that particular exchange. You murdered my wife, took my son. You're a dead man. Your wife, that was a regrettable accident. Still, this world, this life, you've seen it. Pain, suffering, death is its only escape. Don't worry, Sean's fine. Maybe a little older than you expected, huh? But I can't give him to you, because he ain't here. So as you can see, despite Kellogg's ruthlessness, he does occasionally express remorse for his actions. It kind of makes you wonder if he could redeem himself for his past actions. It's really hard to say what would happen to Kellogg if you were able to spare him. The thing is, is that Kellogg's death is so interwoven into Fallout 4's main plot that I'm not really sure that you could not kill him. I think the place that we need to start, though, is why do we find Kellogg in the first place? After saving Nick Valentine, Nick helps you try to determine who killed your spouse and took your son, Sean. You find out that it's Kellogg, so you get into his house in Diamond City, you give Dogmeat his scent, and then you eventually end up in Fort Hagen where you confront him. This starts a battle where you kill Kellogg and defeat his army of synths. Once Kellogg is dead, you loot his body and retrieve his cybernetic implants, which contain some of his memories. These are used to reveal parts of Kellogg's backstory, as well as show how the Institute uses teleportation to get in and out of their facility. You also learn about Virgil and that you need to seek him out. If Kellogg is spared, how is the sole survivor supposed to learn about the Institute's teleportation technology? The only way that I could think of is if Kellogg told the Soul Survivor about the Institute's teleporters, and even then, if you kill Kellogg, Nick seems to indicate that Kellogg wasn't going to be somebody that was going to be taken alive. And here's some proof of that during Nick and Piper's conversation after you've killed Kellogg. Whatever you're thinking, it doesn't matter. He's dead. Yeah. Figures the Institute's only man on the outside wouldn't be the type to be taken alive. So, a murderer and a kidnapper gets his brains blown out by an avenging parent. Huh. Be a great ending if we didn't still have the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth to solve. 
For the reasons I previously mentioned, I would say that if you were to spare Kellogg, you wouldn't get into the Institute and you wouldn't find Sean. Fallout 4's story is constructed in such a way that you have to kill Kellogg. If you don't kill Kellogg, you can't progress through the game. The story is set up in such a way that the sole survivor wants to kill Kellogg as a way to avenge the death of their spouse. While you may get to say that you regret it later when you're talking to Piper and Nick afterwards, you still can't not kill Kellogg. But what if things were different? Let's say you didn't actually have to kill Kellogg to progress through Fallout 4's story, or the game allowed you to figure out how to get into the Institute without killing Kellogg, and the story largely progressed the same way. So instead of confronting and killing Kellogg, you were able to confront him and either talk him down through a speech check, or you were able to deactivate his cybernetics with some kind of inhibitor technology. You still beat him, but it's a non-lethal solution. Let's think about why Kellogg is at Fort Hagen for a second. He set up a temporary base there so he can traverse the glowing sea in an attempt to hunt down and kill Virgil. Virgil is a loose end for the Institute, and as one of their lackeys, Kellogg is doing their bidding. If Kellogg lives, he is going to kill Virgil, who, as we know, is the sole survivor's best chance of actually getting into the Institute. At the same time, depending on how the speech check or inhibitor technology would work, perhaps you could convince Kellogg to help you get into the Institute. I would say there is actually a remote possibility that Kellogg might help get the player in. As I've shown earlier, while Kellogg is an operative for the Institute, he doesn't particularly like them. Plus, he also feels some remorse about killing the sole survivor's spouse. He may view helping the sole survivor entering the Institute as a step towards the path of redemption for all the various evil things that he's done throughout his life. Another option is something like what we saw with Paladin Dance. Through speech checks, you're able to convince both Dance as well as Elder Maxon that Dance should be kept alive but in exile. While I think Father would still try to figure out ways to kill Kellogg, Kellogg may be able to leave the Commonwealth if he wanted to. Perhaps if he would go further south to parts of the Capital Wasteland, or even into parts of the Carolinas or Florida. Assuming you were able to pick the Institute ending, and you spared Kellogg, you would become director of the Institute, and you could call off the search for Kellogg. Now, could Kellogg ever become a good guy if he was spared at Fort Hagen? Honestly, I don't think so. Even when he was in San Francisco, and he had a wife and daughter, he was still pretty evil then. Kellogg was trying to be a family man, yet the guy was also trained and operated as a professional killer. Since his wife and daughter are gone, he would most likely go back to his traditional mercenary practices, as is evident from the exchange during one of his memories. Mind if we sit down? Suit yourself. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you pay me. Oh, we'll pay you. And, uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's right. We pay you when the job is done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it. So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek away. As you can see, Kellogg is a mercenary whose primary drive is money. As long as he gets paid, he would kill anyone you want. While he does have some reservations on killing kids and maybe women, he has done it before and would probably do it again if he got paid enough. For that reason, I think Kellogg would have to become an entirely different person in order to become a good guy. Plus, even if the sole survivor spared him at Fort Hagen, I don't see the sole survivor ever forgiving Kellogg for killing their spouse or kidnapping their child, so you're not going to have Kellogg as a companion in-game. On the one hand, not killing Kellogg would make completing Fallout 4's story impossible. Kellogg will kill Virgil if he isn't stopped at Fort Hagen. On the other hand, I think giving us the ability to spare Kellogg may have had some interesting effects on Fallout 4's plot. What if Kellogg helped you get into the Institute, as opposed to either the Brotherhood, Railroad, or Minutemen?
At the end of the day, I don't think Kellogg can be redeemed. He's been beyond the point of no return for quite some time, even when the sole survivor confronts him at Fort Hagen. As soon as he became a hired gun, he was on trajectory for all of the bad things that he would do later on in his life. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this particular video. Like this video if you liked it. And as always, take care and I'll see you all next time.